Welcome to Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news, trends, and hottest topics that focus on advances in cybersecurity and cyber industry economics. Our expert yet down-to-earth hosts make cybersecurity straightforward. They ask the tough questions and make this challenging topic something that everyone can understand. Our candid approach lets guests open up on topics we would all like to see addressed. You can find us on the web at newcyberfrontier.com. That's www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join today's host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Okay. And hello, this is Abe Thompson at SecureSat Studios here in Colorado Springs on the New Cyber Frontier. I have the distinct privilege of having as my guest today, Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Brothers, who's at Air Force CyberWorks on board the U.S. Air Force Academy. Uh, she's also uh, specifically involved in strategic engagement and an assistant professor of political science. Uh, Colonel, it's a delight to have you with us. It's a pleasure to be on the podcast. Outstanding, outstanding. So, so tell us, uh, you have uh, quite a remarkably diverse career and some different things that you've done, but uh, definitely now have, a, have a, a firm foot in the cyber world as well. Tell us about uh, your career journey a little bit. Definitely. I, I think eclectic would probably be a good <laughs> word there. Great. Uh, I'm uh, at the moment, I'm a reservist on active duty with the Air Force. So on a three-year active duty tour here. Um, but what led up to that was a, a background. I started out in manpower and personnel. Um, I then became a, a foreign area officer for Western Europe, so I speak Italian and Spanish. I've taught for many years in yeah, <laughs> taught for many years here in the Department of Political Science, the Air Force Academy. Done admissions and outreach work as well. Um, on the civilian side, as a reservist, um, I've worked in a few capacities, um, teaching for um, online schools when we were in a geographically separated location, as the Air Force likes to euphemistically say, that is far away from other humans. Um, and, and then also um, had a role in major gifts fundraising. So that kind of brought me back here to Colorado and brought me here to the Air Force Academy. At the, the time that I came back, Air Force CyberWorks was, uh, was just sort of a nascent idea with some of the, the folks here and then the leadership across the Air Force. And at that time, um, I made a connection with one of those leaders who said, uh, boy, we have you know, some reserve mandates. We'd like to bring you on. And also, we'd, we'd like you to help us. Uh, you know, we need what you do. So we need the relationship building function uh, established for Air Force Cyber Work. So much of my previous career in both connecting cadets and students with information, connecting international partners and organizations with resources and policy kind of has all come together across this eclectic career as just being a being a connector. So that's the function that I fill with Air Force Cyber Works, doing a role as industry liaison, um, some stakeholder management strategy, uh, things along those lines. And that's certainly what we need. You know, the more I've been, even since uh, my Navy career in the cyber world, uh, I'm, I'm recognizing that this is still very, very, very much a people business and always will be. Whether it's it's looking at the mind of sort of adversaries on the network or looking at the relationships that need to be built to, to, to merge resources to get the mission done. And so, yeah, I have one of those funny backgrounds too. And, 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 and yet here we are, uh, you know, as, as connectors that are, that are helping move this cyber mission forward. Uh, outstanding. Now, just a sort of a quick side, uh, my lead instructor now, Dr. James Borders here at SecureSet. Do you remember him at all from your time at the Academy? I do, and we've had many mixed-up emails exchanged when we were here. So uh, Borders and Brothers are awfully close on the alphabet. So we'd get frantic messages from students looking for the wrong person. Yeah, so... And <laughs> so it, say, it, say hi to Jim for me. I shall, and it just kind of goes to show you, too, there's a you know, political science professor that is, that is now the vice president of, uh, of uh, cybersecurity education here at SecureSat who's been steeped in, in uh, sort of a different world and brings his, his background of, of diversity here. And so um, in the, the position that you're in, uh, how much interface on, on, a, on a given day do you have, say, with cadets versus uh, other folks across the cyber industry? Um, and it, this helps to, to sort of establish what function CyberWorks holds. So we're an, an Air Force entity, uh, part of the innovation ecosystem across the Air Force. 
that's located here at the academy for some of the advantages that um, that that offers. Of course, a federal lab having 4,000 digital natives um, on campus here, as well as a number of, you know, over 100 PhDs. So, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, in the fall, we teach a course under the uh, umbrella of systems engineering, but it's offered to all cadets. Um, so, any any major, any background can take that class. Uh, for a, it's a Hacking for Defense class. So under the Hacking for Defense course umbrella that's done uh, done globally now. It's going to say nationwide, but it's, uh, it's international as well. And that one is sort of technology innovation, and it's tied to a government or DOD problem sponsor. So we deal with a little over 20 cadets in that class. And then um, over the past several years since CyberWorks was stood up, we have held that course, a technology innovation course, and then also provided some mentorship for, for cadets in capstone projects with the Department of Computer and Cyber Science here at the Academy. Excellent. Um, I forgot to ask, what was your AFSC, um, or what is your AFSC in the Air Force? So that's always a fun, that's a fun question to ask of reservists. Uh, I've got a nice a nice bucket of them. I started out with force support, um, so 38F now, um, also 16F, which is a foreign area officer, and then there are special duty identifiers here at the academy. So I'm an assistant professor, which is an instructor AFSC. Oh, it does have one. That's neat. That's neat. It does, yeah. And so um, be before we kind of jump a little bit more into CyberWorks, let's take a quick break and go hear from our sponsor. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. This is Abe Thompson back with New Cyber Frontier from the SecureSet Studios here in Colorado Springs. Our guest today is Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Brothers, who is at the CyberWorks uh, at the uh, Air Force Academy as an assistant professor of political science. So uh, this, this CyberWorks initiative, uh, what has driven this? Um, you know, we kind of heard about the benefits of having this entity on board a, a, an academic institution like the Air Force Academy. What has driven the need for CyberWorks, um, particularly not, not necessarily just for the Air Force, but in general? Um, I'll say that, and to, to answer this question, to preface that, um, the organization was set up right about the time as we started to see a, a sort of a watershed of support for innovation concepts across the, the DOD. So if you remember, uh, former Secretary Ash Carter stood up Defense Innovation Unit Experimental out in Silicon Valley to try to build stronger relationships between Silicon Valley and the DOD. Um, we kind of kind of came in the, the next wave, about six months after them, and then uh, AppWorks and a number of other innovation units built off of that momentum. So Part of this comes from an interest in the government's desire to work better, work faster, maintain operational advantage that is going to have to come from being better at uh, problem solving and using appropriate technologies and integrating those into the, into the DOD faster. Um, CyberWorks specifically, um, when I'm sure we'll get some questions about what, you know, what our secret sauce is within the innovation ecosystem, is, is focused on human-centered design. And so we kind of fill that niche and fill that need of problem solving, keeping the operator, the airman, at the heart of the challenges that come to us. So uh, it, it at the time was, was not common. It's still not entirely common across the DOD. So part of it is helping to instill a cultural change across the Air Force for creating um, innovative problem solvers, um, you know, using making good use of taxpayer resources and funds, um, being smart, being agile, using uh, lesser used muscle movements for acquisitions capabilities, things like that to bring technologies on board. So it's, it's, 
it's met a need that um, our government has definitely decided we need to meet if we're going to be competitive in the global environment. Well, and, it, and right at its core is centering on that most precious of all resources, and that's that, like you said, that airman in the seat, um, the executor of the mission. And, you know, we see that uh, across the board, even, you know, in the space that I'm in, in, in education, we're, we're interested in, um, you know, soft skills uh, as an important component. But, but I look back at uh, my experience in the Navy, where we have some similar initiatives. I was actually on board the sea-based battle lab uh, at one point, it was a it was a numbered fleet commander, and this entire ship was devoted to innovation. And uh, even even the internal space for sort of the the staff meetings and planning and in, in innovation on this you know still war fighting combat based uh, battle lab uh, was the they designed this staff meeting space um, by bringing in uh, believe it or not the Disney uh, Imagineers team. And, and they designed, I believe it. They designed this entire space to accommodate the, you know, optimization of, of brainstorming and thinking and, and human innovation. It was, it was such a nifty merger of here's Disney and, and the Department of Defense. I, I've actually heard that, that um, what we're doing now is very, very similar to the, the Battle Lab concept. So we had the same thing in the Air Force. And when we talked to some of the folks who were, they're now in uh, 16th Air Force, but were in 24th and 25th Air Force, they said this is like the, the new version of the Battle Lab concept. How do we, you know, how do we merge best practices of industry, um, you know, and not, not just for its own sake, but for the sake of delivering better things for our airmen? Of course. Now, now talk about that, that industry partnership, because, you know, you're, you know, you've got that uh, strategic engagement component to your role um, what does that look like in terms of who are some of the players that you're allowed to talk about uh, as being a, a part of the, the, the partnering? Oh, definitely. Um, and we've got, so again, that this location at the Academy is really advantageous for us and then for the Colorado Springs community. Um, so the Academy itself is a federal lab. Also, as an academic institution, we can partner with industry through cooperative research and development agreements. We can use partner intermediary agreements, or PIAs, and we have uh, uh, four of those, one of which is local here in town uh, called C-Track down at Catalyst Campus. That is, they are, yeah, they're nonprofits that help us reach out to industry partners to collaborate on projects with us. And since the Air Force is not making the choice of, of which the, those industry partners are, our PIAs are making those choices. We're then able to move into, if needed, into, you know, contracting actions and things like that, and they are not um, prohibited from going into those activities because CyberWorks didn't choose them. And then uh, additionally, um, so a number of those opportunities, but we've got a really strong cybersecurity community here in Colorado Springs, both on the academic side through the, the university, and then we've got a strong chamber of commerce, a small business development council, um, organizations like AFSIA, the National Cybersecurity Center, so NCC here in Colorado. It's really just a, it's a ripe location for, for building one another up. And, and I, I love that. We often talk about our cybersecurity ecosystem here and, and the depth. I mean, in, in, in going a step further in, in Colorado and Colorado Springs in particular, the mayor is, 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 I believe, chairman of the National Cybersecurity Center, uh, Cybersecurity Center Board. The, the governor is involved uh, on that board. And so, yeah, definitely uh, there's, a, there's been a, a, a great uh, effort, I think, by this city and by this state to embrace uh, the importance of this industry. And uh, we see it looks like we're definitely benefiting from that. Absolutely, yeah. It's, we're, we're all lucky for that. So what are some, um, some real-life problems and sort of challenges and issues and opportunities that you're, that you're, you're seeing on the horizon that you're working on right now uh, inside, inside the, uh, the CyberWorks? Um, well, we've got, we've got a lot more projects under our belt than I think we ever expected to have, uh, which probably speaks to, you know, there, there are a lot of opportunities across the DOD to, uh, to help improve things. So we're moving into, I want to say, our, our 25th or 26th project now. Um, we had, I kind of only ever expected to do about three, you know, roughly three in different phases at a time. So um, to, to be this far just three years in is a little bit mind-blowing. Um, lots of the things that we're doing right now, um, of course, 
are preparing to help posture the government for trying to figure out how to best use artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, so using some of those tools to help decision makers make better decisions. Um, again, take some of the, the mental load off of operators and allow machines to be able to do some of those things. Um, we get a lot of challenges that have impact and potential on the special operations community. So, for example, the Hacking for Defense class that I mentioned is working on a problem set um, collaboratively with a nonprofit that's also interested in anti-mining. Uh, but the special operators need is, of course, uh, using innovative technology to do sensing, remote sensing of unexploded ordnance, so IEDs. And it's a, there's a shared interest between, um, you know, international community and then the DOD to try to find out how to do that better and save lives. So those are those are just some some examples. Well, I mean, talk about uh, pinnacle type issues of, of tremendous importance. Um, and so can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the the process as it unfolds? You bring in a project. Um, you know, you, I'm sure there's something even before that in terms of vetting and determining where you're going to start, which projects you're going to go with. Uh, can you talk a bit about uh, about that piece? Definitely. Um, and I'm kind of in that phase with a couple of projects that we're working with um, the Air War College Blue Horizons program. So kind of a special special teams done at Air War College. And we're in that process right now. There are lots of conversations on the front end to determine if we are the right fit for this particular problem set. Is is human-centered design the tool that really should be applied to this problem set? So we, we talk about, you know, that up front. What is it that you're hoping to do? Are you, have they already come in knowing what technology they want to use and they just have to figure out how to apply it? We, we might not be the right one for that. But uh, we'll have multiple calls with um, stakeholders. We will send some of our UX team members, our user experience design team members on site to do research to see what does this problem look like in the real world? How are, how are airmen and operators dealing with this? So we understand kind of what we're, what we're trying to design around and solve for. Um, so that's, I'd say the, the heavy lifting comes in the problem definition phase. Are you asking the right question? Um, so really understanding and articulating what is being brought to our, our front steps and making sure that we're the right tool set for that, for that particular challenge. Well, and given the nature of, you know, defense business, um, often security clearance and, and issues of that nature come up, um, how, not that that's circumvented, but how are you able to interface uh, consistently with sort of the public and, and private ventures uh, with, uh, with security in mind? Um, most everything that that we're involved with on the front end is is unclassified in its in its nature and its development and design uh, when it comes to terms of classification for the projects where that's applied. I mean, it's in the application of whatever technology is developed. So, in a lot of cases, even like the one that I mentioned with that class, we're looking at challenges that industry is dealing with as well. So there's, but you know, there's no need to be to, to go into classified space to talk about how we might best leverage certain um, for functions of machine learning. Um, it's really how it's, going to, how it's going to be applied. Excellent. Let's take another quick break and go hear from our sponsor. Security Services are your cybersecurity experts with decades of experience providing professional training services for our clients in various industries. We offer professional training and certification in areas of cybersecurity, safety, health, and environmental services at our academy. Our in-person and online training provides a collaborative environment where students can interact directly with instructors through live chats or in private classrooms. Visit murraysecurityservices.com for more information. And we're back on New Cyber Frontier. This is Abe Thompson here at the SecureSet Studios in Colorado Springs. Our guest is Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Brothers. We're talking about uh, her work now at the uh, Air Force Cyberworks uh, on board the U.S. Air Force Academy. And so this, this process that, that brings these projects, 
um, really allows for this open communication, and it's designed such that you can have a lot of uh, broad interface with uh, public and private uh, private entities. Um, how are the cadets playing into this, given the given their proximity? Um, and so, in, in a few ways, they can uh, they can certainly take our class if they have uh, the opportunity. At the moment, the class is an elective course. Um, could fill in a, a bucket for a systems engineering degree, so they can take the hacking for defense class. Um, additionally, there's a, a broad push for innovation as a line of effort across the academy, um, and we have lots of interoperability and discussions and collaboration with the different innovation functions of the academy. So we've got a cadet spark cell that's here um, that we have provided some assistance for in terms of training and um, bringing some some fairly high level speakers on site to get exposure for the cadets to you know what's happening in the real world in terms of innovation. Um, and then we offer our, our UX services to both faculty members and then cadets who have an interest in using them uh, here in CyberWorks, as well as the use of our space. So like you mentioned, that Battle Lab function that was designed by Disney, I, I wish I could say we had that. Ours, ours looks a little bit googly here, but um, you know, with our neon lights and, and bright colors, that are, that are romper room, it's hard to say, um, but you know, there's a lot glass boards for writing and stickies and I mean it's meant for open-minded thinking collaboration um, and so inviting folks in to use that space sometimes just getting out of the phys physical location that you're used to the structure of any particular Air Force organization sometimes that's that's just worthwhile in itself sure enough uh, you know I, I laugh hearing about the the Google space I remember doing a, before I retired from the Navy I did an executive tour in the same day of uh, Google and Cisco. So started off the morning oh, at Cisco, my. you know, ties and suits and polish shoes. And then in the afternoon, I was at Google with the bicycles, flip flops and, uh, <laughs> and free food everywhere. <laughs> and, and the nap, the nap pods. I think the, uh, the cadets would probably prefer it if we had those big hanging nap pods here, but, uh, no such luck. Indeed. Now, um, so do, do the cadets actually is, uh, are they, are you teaching your class over at the, the main academic building, or do they come over to your spaces for, for these courses? Our space is in the main academic building. So we're in the library, the, the McDermott Library on campus. Um, so they can they come over to our space. Excellent. Um, so uh, in terms of the hacking, the, the hacking for defense, I believe is what you called it, uh, what are some of the components of, of that syllabus uh, and the things that you're putting out there for the cadets? Um, so that particular syllabus, uh, originally the, the program was started by um, Steve Blank and a number of his friends in Silicon Valley, who is the founder of um, the Lean Innovation Process. So if you've read or heard of the, the Lean Startup, it uses um, lean innovation principles for development. I mean, at the end of the day, his process was focused on developing small businesses and entrepreneurship. And as they moved into hacking for defense, it was to apply these techniques for solving problems for the government. Um, so they went from a you know business model canvas to the mission model canvas. How can we help um, you know uh, government functions uh, achieve their mission in a better way? Excellent. Um, and it, is there a chance then uh, during that process where they pick up some of the lean uh, certifications or, or is that something you guys are involved in? Uh, they do not and we do not. And so here's, the, I will say the beauty, I don't know if maybe Steve Blank would agree, although it's possible. He kind of likes the, the variation. Um, we've added in our kind of our own mix. So we have a team of, of UX designers here, as I mentioned before, um, who each come in with a unique set of um, practices and skills, and they, they bring those into the process. So we are not following the standard formula of an H4D course um, in that sense. It certainly meets the intent, um, but they're getting a broad array of human-centered design principles. Well, and, and I'm sure that in academia you appreciate that freedom to kind of, um, you know, you know, break the envelope a little bit and expand beyond and, 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 and really allow the education experience to fit the particular need at the time. Absolutely. And since a lot of the H4D courses, or, or many of them, are kind of, uh, they might be aligned with schools that have a really strong business plan uh, with students who have a goal to go out and start their own businesses, that's that's not necessarily the case here. We're, you know, we're not graduating second lieutenants to go out and, and go start the next business for the problem that they're solving. Uh, we want them to be smart about those kinds of things, but that's not part of the end goal. Sure. 
So um, it, with the existence of uh, CyberWorks, how often do you actually have external folks come in with a problem um, that, that, that you know, they've kind of defined and they're hoping to solve? Um, and that that is a good a good merger too, because I didn't want you to to go away and think that all of our all of our projects involve cadets. Um, about twenty five to thirty percent of our projects have cadets involved, and the rest are all Air Force operators, um, both civilian and military, and then industry partners as well. So it's one portion of what we do. Um, the problems and projects that we get are come from mostly the Air Force. Um, however, we've gotten quite a few from the joint community too. So we've we've done a couple recently for NORAD Northcom. Um, we find that other entities across the DoD are facing similar challenges. So we're looking at one that's related to flight scheduling, um, and I'm sure pilots out there, you know, can all nod their heads and saying, "Hey, have you ever had to do flight scheduling on a grease board?" And you're moving pucks around, and you know the way that it the way that it was 40 years ago is sadly the way that it still is. So it's it's a problem across, the, you know. Yeah, exactly. They get one change to your schedule, they got to erase the board and start over. Um, so we're all looking at better ways to be smart about doing flight scheduling. So we're, we're doing a project in concert with the Marines and with um, DIU and AFWorks as well to try to, you know, have not just have this niche solution for the Air Force, but have something that's going to be impactful working together with a number of organizations. Now, will we still have the airplane cartoons involved? <laughs> As, you know, sticks, planes on sticks, you got to have those. I mean, <laughs> how else would you learn interpreting? So um, do you, if, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the remainder of sort of the personnel, the Air Force operators and, and Department of Defense type civilians and otherwise, is this a, a TDY type of thing or are, are folks PCS in for a, a long-term project? How does that work? Uh, it's, uh, it's definitely TDY. So most of our activities and events are, are on site here for anywhere from uh, two to five days, kind of depending on the complexity of the challenge. Um, and then they're kind of sent off after that and we you know, move in towards, you know, prototyping or development or policy change, whatever comes out of that on-site event. Sometimes we'll have multiple phases of two to three day events. You know, we come together, we, you know, separate off for a couple months, come back together again and, and nug out on the second part of a challenge. But they're, they're almost always a TDY. Um, occasionally we can send our team out to, uh, to bases that are trying to work through something uh, in fact, uh, four folks of ours were just up at J-Bear uh, Joint Base, Elmendorf Richardson in Alaska last week, um, working with them. They had a, a innovation kind of a fusion event and then also a problem-solving event. They had come here on site for a week a couple of months ago, and then we sent our team up to them as part of this other event. Uh, excellent. The, the scalable sort of transportable skunk works almost, uh, which is kind of a, a neat model. Uh, I like that. Um, now... Uh, what do you envision uh, to be some of the next big things uh, to come out of CyberWorks uh, that uh, those of us out here in podcast land should uh, be paying attention to? Um, at the moment, there's a there's a pretty big initiative across the U, uh, across the Air Force uh, to develop a, a digital university. So lots of conversations going on, and uh, you know, say LinkedIn land and social media about the need for. Um, creating kind of a marketplace for developing certain skills that can that airmen and operators can kind of log into this particular platform, um, work on a skill, and then have a competency that they can carry with them throughout the Air Force um, that we don't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily have trained them for. So um, one thing, we are working on the user experience part of digital university. So uh, human-centered design function. How do you, how do you teach um, UX? For airmen, because we've got a lot, we've got a lot of folks who are doing software development on their own right now for their own units. So, how do you how do you do that appropriately and make something that people are going to want to use and have an intuitive experience with? And would you foresee this to be a, a DoD only type uh, uh, university, or would it have a, a broader? Would there be maybe a broader access for those of us old retired guys? But so it's still fairly nascent at the moment. It's gonna. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be DoD only. Um, but we are again across the Air Force and the DoD. We're leaning on small businesses and big businesses to really help us um, develop and design these kinds of things. So you see a lot of increased emphasis on the SBIR program. So Small Business Innovation Research Funds. Um, 
everybody is starting to get on board to advertise to those programs for open topics and then engage small businesses in applying for them. Love it. Love it. Um, so, you know, having, I guess I was looking back somewhere, uh, was it 2016 CyberWorks was established? That's correct. Um, what is your sense for uh, maybe why it took actually so long for something like this to, to come together? Uh, what were some of the, the factors in, in kind of leading up to uh, finally getting this thing launched? Well, probably I'd say counter to popular belief, it's kind of hard to start a new government organization. <laughs> so uh, just getting, you know, manpower, resources, the, the things that we needed to do, some contracting functions like uh, other transactional authority. Uh, we just um, just heard that we have CSO, so commercial service openings as of today. Some of those things just take, just take a long time. Um, so we started out, we had um, initial operational capability in 2017, and then uh, really have taken on uh, more than our fair share, I'd say, uh, or more than we expected, rather, uh, from that point forward. So if, uh, if we have uh, folks out here, um, certainly we'll probably have folks in the DOD and contracting realm that, that are listening. If folks want to know more about uh, CyberWorks there and you know, either to, to, to learn more or to, to offer support, uh, where would they go to kind of begin that process? Uh, we've got a website so and that is maintained by one of our partner intermediaries for us for outreach, and that's afcyberworks.org. And it gives you the opportunity to get connected, whether you're government, academia, or industry. And then it sends a, a note to the right organization for, for who, can, who can handle that particular uh, entity. So if you say that you're an industry partner, you're going to get connected to our partner intermediary. And so you'd receive updates from, from them about upcoming projects that we've got where we want to do some industry partner recruitment. Excellent. Uh, definitely fascinating. Uh, that's uh, AF Cyberworks with an X at the end, dot org. Um, we've had on board with us today Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Brothers, who is in at the uh, Air Force Cyberworks there at the United States Air Force Academy. Uh, it has been a delight to have you on board. Uh, what a diverse career and uh, a sort of exciting initiative to be a part of. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking with you, Abe. Indeed. This is Abe Thompson at SecureSet Studios here in Colorado Springs on the new Cyber Frontier. Good day. Thank you for listening to New Cyber Frontier. Remember to follow or like our post and circulate each new show to your networks. We keep you informed, bring you the latest news, explore new trends, and find the hottest topics. With New Cyber Frontier, you don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert. Just get plugged in. We encourage you to get involved. Tell us what topics interest you and join our mailing lists. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. That's newcyberfrontier.com. Check out our previous interviews and please let us know if there are any topics that you would like to hear discussed. See you next time on New Cyber Frontier.